Merry Christmas. It's only about a week away, which I can't believe that happened so quickly, but what have I been up to? Hey everybody, it's me, Margaret, and I am out here on my front porch with my wreath that I did last year. This was a store-bought wreath that I sort of enhanced, and I do have a video on uh, working on this little guy. Oh, can't see him. He's washing out. Cute little nose. I have been doing some knitting and crochet, but not a whole lot because there's so many other things that are going on right now. No major projects. Um, I'm just working on this little scrap pack, which I think is turning out really pretty. It's a charcoal gray, and I'm just inserting a row here and a row there of color. Really, really like it. Okay, look what came in the mail. We have another knit crate. And I always get excited. Now remember, crochet crate has been discontinued. So let's see what we have in here. Because remember, it's always a surprise to me. Ooh. Dun, da, da. Isn't it pretty? It's bulky. And it is, ooh, the colorway is called Storm by... How you say that? Labribi, Labribis by Knit Crate. So, what do they offer for us to make with it? Knit Crate Little Village. Imagine being tucked away in a little valley, snuggly nestled between hills and mountains, little houses lined up together in the brightest, happiest painted colors. This month, we're taking inspiration from such idyllic scenes as storybooks with our knit crate theme, Little Village. I can see that. I can see this. This looks like maybe a stone cottage or something. I love that. And the pattern we have is from Carla Brady. Oh, and it is crochet. Frost flower cowl. Oh, and a knit. Tempest hat. Okay, so here's the thing. They're not going to have a crochet crate anymore, but they still are going to offer us some crochet patterns. Isn't that cool? I love that. And then you can make them a cowl to go with it. Super fun, Knit Crate. I love that. Let's learn more about this yarn real quick. This is fluffy wool, 100% Peruvian Highland wool with a bulky weight. I love it. So, look and see if it's still available on Knit Crate. You can use that coupon code that I've got down in the description box below to get yourself 20% off your first order. That's a plus. So, it's fun. So, I was out and about shopping and look at this knitting themed wrapping paper from Walmart. There's some cables. Isn't that great? And no, I didn't buy any because I already had my wrapping paper for the year, but. And here's a little loom in the kids section. I think I've shown that before. This I think I saw at Michael's. Couldn't remember if I showed you or not. So cute. And this was Hobby Lobby. Now look, tons of patterns for this. I didn't catch the price on these for some strange reason. I didn't look at it, but you had a couple of designs. That one looks like it seen better days. Look, pom-poms tied on the, the handle of the cup. Cute idea. And last but not least, this sweater was in our grocery store of all places. Every holiday season I like to share my Christmas playlist with you. <laughs> Inevitably I will get comments saying, what was that video you told us about last year where uh, I talked about the European Christmas? Well, that one is called Rick Steves. I'm looking down here on my computer. Rick Steves European Christmas. And I love it. I watch it every single solitary year, even though I know what's in it, but it's just fun. I like the music, I like the sounds. It's great. And I've added something funny this year to the playlist, and that is um, Christmas According to Kids. <laughs> they have children telling the story of Jesus' birth, but they have adults acting it out. It was some church and, and they all pitched in and did this. It is hysterical and it makes me laugh like crazy every year. So you might want to see that. 
One big project was to get the exam survival bags ready for the 11th grade at Thomas' school. They ordered brown paper gift bags in bulk, so I had to dress it up a bit by designing a label from the North Pole, of course. I printed it out, and here I am cutting them all out. We have 140 11th graders. This paper cutter I'm using is an old one and by Fiskars, and it uses rotary blades. And of course, you can use any kind of um, pattern rotary blade, too. But more on this project later. I needed to get up and stretch. Let's head to the kitchen and see what's cooking. Ha! One of my biggest time savers is cooking my brown rice ahead of time and freezing it. And if you want to know how I do that, check the link in the description box below. I always use the oven, not the sto stove top. I checked the pantry, but I had no brown rice. But I did have quinoa, farro, and a tiny bit of white rice, so I cooked all that up in three separate containers. I had to look up instructions for how to cook the farro in the oven, but you know, all of that is pretty easy. If you don't know, farro is an ancient grain, not genetically modified, and it's delicious. Kind of tastes like a healthy version of corn. So not only did I get a jump on Christmas cooking, but I made room in the pantry too. And on the other side of the kitchen, we have dinner, which is a very simple crock pot recipe, which is salt, pepper, paprika, olive oil on your chicken. You put it on top of onions and you sprinkle some garlic around there and you let it cook. My grocery store is catching on to the popularity of those food subscription services that deliver complete meals to your door for you to cook yourself. There's so much less waste with those things because they only send the amount that you need. Now this was a prepackaged slow cooker roast that I bought and let's see what we have here. So the vegetables are packaged separately from the roast, that's good. But what the heck is this? I think that's a seasoning packet. And then the roast, the roast, the roast looks good. So I'm looking for some instructions here to see uh, ingredients, maybe what's in that little uh, packet. Don't see anything here on the front. And then on the back there are the instructions and there are the ingredients. The ingredients don't look like what I would normally put. Don't like those chemicals, but let's give it a try. So it says a cup of water. Got a little whisk there. Dump those chemicals in there and whisk them up so that they're well blended. I open the roast, put it in the crock pot, and now we're going, this is what the mess looks like in there. Stir it all up to make sure it's good. And then it said to dump it over the roast. Then the instructions said, open the bag of vegetables and dump them all around the roast. But what, there's a whole onion in here. So let me set that aside. I chopped up my onion and uh, the potatoes while I was at it and put on the top and let it cook on low. Can't get much easier than that. Now I hope it tastes good. I'll have to keep you posted on that. I have to glue on the labels that I cut out yesterday. I found this graphic from a site called beinggenevieve.com and I'll link it below. It's just what I needed for 16 year old boys. Festive enough, but not too cutesy. So I finished 144 bags with the little labels on them, stacked here with weights on them so that they'll be good and stuck. I went through about two glue sticks and a cup of coffee. Luckily my, my son helped me. But let me show you something I got to go in them. The tech officers asked us, please do not give them too much sugar and stuff. So I found these balls on Amazon and they worked out to be something like 50 cents a piece, maybe less than that. They're actually little puzzles. And I got their different types of puzzles that are in there. It's about three different kinds, four different kinds. And then look at this. You know how wild socks are all the rage these days? These are a bunch of Argyle socks in wild colors that I got for like $1.25 a piece. Isn't that crazy? And while I'm in this room, this is the guest room, and look at all the stuff that I have to put back after the painting episode. And this is a painting Thomas did. 
ages ago and it hangs in the guest bathroom because I just love it so much. And look at tiny Margaret. That was me when I was little and apparently going to Olin Mills to have your picture made was all the rage back in those days because it turns out my husband had the same exact pictures done. So we mounted them and put them in matching frames so we can hang them up together. All right, Tucker's out of town and Tyler's not ready to eat yet, so I'm gonna give it a try myself. Everybody knows to use like a smaller plate if you have trouble with your portion sizes, right? That's an old trick. You know, we all tend to think, oh, it's very tender. We all tend to think um, we know what a portion size is, but we really don't. <laughs> and this isn't a, a dieting tip. Well, I guess it could be a dieting tip. It's just my life. I mean, I just am very careful to eat not more than I need to when it comes to a portion size, right? All right, so I've got a little meat there. Let me get a potato just because I want to taste it. And I'll get a carrot. And very tender, as with any crock pot thing. So let's see how this chemically seasoning packet is. It's okay, but I think next time I'm going to season it myself the way I would normally season a roast and skip that chemical thing because it tastes a lot like uh, fake beef bouillon, you know, the um, not the cubes, but that powder. Anyway, it's okay, but I can make it better. I really like the way that the amount was proportionate. This gave me just enough for this one dish, which is great. And then you just get a few of the new potatoes instead of having a bag of new potatoes or whatever. So um, I really like that. I thought that was pretty handy dandy. But I would use my own seasoning. Every year, Debbie Keep is kind enough to send me one of these Jackie Lawson advent calendars. And I love them. Jackie Lawson is a British uh, designer, and Debbie is from Britain, so she knows all about this, but I want to spread the word. Each day, you click on it, and your ornament will be highlighted, so today is the 18th. You click on it, and you see what your activity is, and this could completely vary. Today, we're decorating a stocking, so you choose a stocking, like, um, let's say the red one, and... I can edit what I did before and, you know, put different things on here. You can edit it once you put it on there by increasing the size or, or whatever. Or if you want to, completely clear the stocking and then just click and it'll decorate one for you, which is just cute. But that's today's activity. But basically what it gives you is a scene that you can sort of wander through and the detail is just beautiful. Like you see this little choo-choo taking the kids through and um, notice, well here's some of, this is what I did the very first day, I decorated the tree. But you see the people walking by and look, these guys are having tea or hot chocolate or something. And look, there's a skier coming down. I mean, just so much to look at if you keep watching. Look at these kids throwing a ball back and forth. Don't play ball in the house. And there's also familiar favorites. Like in her cards, Jackie often puts this um, brown lab, this chocolate lab. His name is Chudley. And this is Birdie, the little cocker spaniel. I don't think these guys, I don't know these guys if they have a name. I need to learn their names. But they're so adorable. Here comes that choo-choo again. But you can see the people walking around in there. Oftentimes you'll learn the history of something or traditions that happen in a certain area. Um, I, I don't know. It's just, it's really impressive. And I look forward to it every year. <laughs> Debbie's been so kind. I think this is the fourth year. It is so fun. I, I just can't say enough about this. So thank you, Debbie. You make me very happy. So... I was at Bravery a little while ago, and 
I glanced down here at this thing called Your Pattern Highlights, and this changes all the time. I guess it's based on uh, different things that people are interested in or clicking on a lot. I'm not exactly sure. But I saw this, and you know I love these little domes, these little elf guys. So I clicked on this, and what it says is Santa Gonk Removable Outfit. And I'm like, do what? So I began to read. Now apparently, here's the deal. You purchase the Santa Gonk, okay? And what this guy is, is your basic pattern of how to make this little um, doll. And his name is Gonk. <laughs> and when you read along here, you've got a Gonk's journey. It's a little story that goes along with the Gonk and how he came to be in his different adventures and everything. And what this is, is a story, a gonk's journey. And it's a whole bunch of stuff um, about how little gonk, uh, his adventures that he went through. Look, here he is when he was first born. His name is Adam. He has a fig leaf. And then he, he comes into the cave men. Look, here's his clothes. There's his fig leaf, and there's his clothes. And then he meets this tribe, he lives with them for a while, and they present him with this wonderful mask. <laughs> Look at his little skirt. And Gonk has an adventure with some pirates. And, I mean, just one suit is cuter than the other. And the clothes appear to be free. Look, here he is as a, as a wizard, like um, from Middle Earth. And a dwarf. But absolutely the cutest thing. So you can't quite call this Vlogmas, can you? Because I haven't done a vlog every single day. But I just thought it was kind of appropriate to show some Christmas traditions or activities, things that I'm doing around here to uh, get things going. So this week is when it gets really Christmassy around here because Thomas is getting out of school. He's finished, he'll finish his exams this week. Maggie will be rolling in at the end of the week and Tyler's already here. We have him, I think he says he has to be back in California on February 1st. So I'm enjoying every minute I can with him while he's here. But um, in the meantime, I'll probably have to be doing a lot more cooking in the next few days as I start to stock up the freezer and everything with, uh, with the goodies that I need while people are home. So they can just run in and get what they want because we kind of all eat breakfast at different times as we get up differently. And, you know, you know how that works. But anyway, I'd love to hear some of your traditions, some of the things that have been going on with you. Um, write it down in the comment section below or join the Facebook group or something like that. And regardless, I just really like to hear the other side of this. So it's not always me. Talk, talk, talk. Right? I love to see those comments down below so that we can kind of share our lives together. So I'll talk to you soon. Bye.